So uh, we're going to get started. Uh, when, whenever, I, whenever I learned, uh, again, about my screw-up and not realizing there was a breakfast this morning, I said, what do I do? And I said, you know what? Uh, I want to go back and I want to touch on something that I haven't done, uh, I haven't done in a while. Um, I've done this lesson two times before, uh, but not, not in a whole lot of depth. Um, so there was, um, if I remember correctly, uh, there, and Corinne, you were probably in that class, and I think Sean and Barb were also, but I think that was about it. Josh may have been there. Uh, we were back in the, in the preschool room. But I did a lesson on the seven laws of creation. Now, I've, I think I've mentioned that uh, to you before, that God creates in a specific way, and he has these principles that he uses uh, to, to, to create the world and to maintain the world, and those, those, those principles still apply to us today. The fact of the matter is, is that most of us don't know them, and because we don't know them, we don't use them appropriately, and when we don't use them appropriately, what do we end up with? We end up being frustrated we end up being confused. So um, I did this lesson, um, I think September of last year, and I tried to put all seven laws into one week, which was a disservice to you. It was a huge disservice to you. Um, so not too long ago, uh, maybe a month ago, um, I did a lesson on the law of cause and effect and how God uses cause and effect all around us, right? And we, and we looked at how uh, in, the, in the creation story, there's a cause, and the cause is God speaks, and there's an effect, and what happens is things happen, right? That's, that's the most simplistic way, but it happens all throughout scriptures. There's a cause, and there's effect, right? We, we looked at it, the wages of sin is death, right? There's a cause, sin, the effect is death, right? That, that was, and we went into that a little more deeply. Um, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the other six laws, I'll, I guess I'll put the seven laws of creation on the board, but we're just going to camp on one, maybe two today, given the limited time that we have. Uh, and, you know, maybe I'll put those on for somewhere down, down the road. Uh, but, and I don't even know which order I'm going to give them to you here this, this morning is. Uh, but let me just list these things out and we will go, we will go from there. So the seven laws of creation. Now the first one we looked at was cause and effect. All the laws are important. None of them are more important than, than any other, but the one that comes first is cause and effect. That's what, that, 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 that's what we have to recognize. Um, so cause and effect is the first one. The second one is the law of vibration. The third one is the law of polarity. The fourth is the law of rhythm. Lose all my notes here, try to stay somewhat organized. If I spelled rhythm right, I trust you can correct my spelling. Um, law of relativity. This is, this is a fun one. Um, the law of the perpetual transmutation of radiant energy. I'm just going to put energy. Energy changes. All right. And then the last one is the law of gestation. Now, we've done this one. Does anybody have one of these that they're more curious about than others? Or are you just equally baffled by all of them? That's possible. 
Polarity? All right. I'm sorry? I'm kind of baffled by it. You're, lo you're baffled by polarity? That, that's good. You know what? Maybe what we'll do is we'll do polarity and we might go into relativity because people get these two laws confused. They, get, they mix them up with one another. Um, so I will tell you, um, I'm, tr I'm trying to be a modern person. I'm trying to be a modern person. I'm trying to use technology to my, to my advantage. So um, I've been using artificial intelligence over the last probably three months to help put some of my lessons together. If you've seen a dramatic improvement or a dramatic decline, just that's the reason. Okay. Um, now it's, you know, what I do is I put stuff in and it gives me some stuff back and then I go back and forth and, and, and put these things together. So, um, whenever I found out about breakfast, I go into AI and I say, Hey, um, I was working on, I was working on a lesson on questions and, um, I said, we're going to have to put a hold on this. I, I actually talk to the AI like it's a person. So think less of me. I do. I do like that's you know that, that that's that's what I'm learning is that you, the, the more you talk to it as a person the more it'll talk back to you as a person um, so I said hey I, I'm doing this uh, what do you think and oh that's a great idea how about have you considered these different things and a lot of times it'll throw out things that I hadn't considered yet um, and so uh, anyway I said hey I'm gonna do the seven laws of creation and just so you know there's a whole nother seven laws of creation that this thing spit out to me uh, the uh, let me see law of intentionality the law of thought the law of speech the law of action the law of belief the law of persistence and the law of rest so I, I accidented upon some other things. So if you find this stuff interesting, there's, whole nother, there's a whole other path we can go down uh, with this. Um, but I said, no, 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 those aren't the seven laws I was thinking of. These are the seven laws that I was thinking of. And I spit it in there. And then it started giving me back. It says, okay, if you're going to talk about the law of polarity, uh, he said, turn to Isaiah 45.7. And as it turns out, Steve, you hit this room. I had my Bible open to Isaiah, so I just have to turn a couple of pages. Two, two, forty, five, seven. God says, I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and I create disaster. I, the Lord, do all these things. Now, the law of polarity, we'll flip the page here. Polarity says that everything has a polar opposite. Bless you. Everything has a polar opposite. This is the law of opposites. All right. Now, this is an important thing, and this is what, it, this is what the scripture says. Light, what's the opposite of light? Dark. Polar opposite. Right. Um, I lost my place here. What was the next thing? Prosperity, disaster. Right. You, you, you have all these things. There's there's polar opposite. And this this is the key. You only know you have one because the opposite exists. So right now you you would say we are inside. Right. You, we, we are inside. How do you know you're inside? Because, you know, outside exists you know that the polar opposite exists, right? So that's, that, 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 that's how it is. Um, this is. This is an important, I lost getting, looking at my thing. This is such a, a, a key piece of the Christian faith because this is what differentiates Christianity from every other religion on planet Earth. Every other religion on planet Earth violates this law. 
Because what is the opposite of spirit? Flesh. What, di what differentiates Christianity is that the word, the spirit, becomes flesh. That's, that's, not what, that's, not, that's not what other religions have. And as such, because they don't have that, it's in violation of the law. Right? So, so there is a, there, there, there is a polar opposite uh, to everything. Um, The note I have here is the presence of, of opposition allows us to, uh, to appreciate and to strive for balance, right? Uh, the, story, the story of uh, Joseph, um, you know, he talks about what was meant for evil, God intended for good, the polar opposite. There's, there's times that you have these, these different things. So you have, you have the, the, the law of polarity is the law of opposites. Now, one that, the one that is very closely related to this, and people confuse these, is the law of relativity. The law of relativity is the law of comparison. And what you have to say is you have to, you have to say, Compared to what? Is this room big? Compared to what? That's the, that's the right application of the law, right? Compared to what? There are a lot of people in here. Compared to what? Right? Is, is it warm in here compared to what? And you see, pe pe people get these confused, right? There's, there's, there's people be like, oh my goodness, I can't believe how warm or how cold it is in here this morning, right? We, we, confuse, we, we confuse extremes with what's, with, with, with what's in between. Um, you, you know, um, that's, let me find my... find my note here. 2 Corinthians 4.17. 2 Corinthians For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them, them all. Are your tr troubles big or small? Compared to what? That's, that's the key. Because, you know, th 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 this, is, this is a teaching point that I use with a lot of people. It's that my guess is... If I asked you to take out a piece of paper and to write down your troubles on that piece of paper, uh, we might be able to come up with, with some decent lists, right? Some of, a, some of us have some troubles. But this is what I know. If we, if we started passing those lists around, you would see a bunch of people who, you ha who have problems that you would say, I would not trade with that person. My problems are relative, comparison, I'll deal with these problems versus those problems. That makes some makes some sense. The, the, the law of the law of comparison um, is the is is the um, law of relativity. Um, let me do. I'm going to do this one very very quickly, uh, but it's the law of vibration. Okay. The, 
the law of vibration um, recognizes that everything in the universe is in constant motion, right? Everything is moving. Some of it moves more quickly than others. So this is, this is the, um, uh, I'll put movement. Some things move at a very, very low frequency. They have a very low vibration. And I, I was thinking about this um, in high school. Uh, you probably had a science class where they may have brought out, I believe it's called an oscilloscope. Owen, have you ever seen an oscilloscope? No? Okay. Maybe they don't have such a thing called an oscilloscope, but it, what it does is it shows, it shows wavelengths, right? And, and, and you, maybe you've seen this, and they'll turn it on, and they'll tune it, and like it'll go, and, and you have some things that basically flatline, and there's like, there's like no movement. When that happens with human beings, we're dead, right? You know, when somebody flatlines, there's no vibration in you anymore. Uh, there's some people... You can make your own jokes about this. Maybe it's your neighbors, maybe it's your in-laws, um, what, whatever it is. But some people have very little. This is not meant to be insulting, but there's some people that don't have a whole lot going on. And it is, it, that was insulting. You're, all, you're Laugh at me, that's all right. We're family in here. I tell stories about you to other people, believe me. No, I'm, I'm making that up. I'm making that up. At the low end, at the low end of the spectrum, you basically you have rocks, right? Rocks don't change a whole lot. That's that that that, that that's pretty. And at the high end of the spectrum, the highest level of vibration is God. That's the highest form, right? And we're somewhere in between here. And the thing about us is that we can change, right? So um, in your car, and this, this, is, this is for older, younger folks won't get this. You, you, you have to remember, there was a time before there was digital tuning on your car radio. And do you remember what that was like? You would, you'd be turning the dial and you'd be getting all sorts of static and then all of a sudden you'd hit the right frequency, you hit the right vibration, and the station comes in. Does anybody remember what that, can, can you hear that in your mind's ear? You can hear the fuzz, you can hear the static, and then all of a sudden, boom, it locks in. You know, and so there's, there's times where you, you, you sort of go in between some of those, 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 different, um, uh, those different levels. Uh, and so we need to recognize that everything has a different vibration. Different people that you come in contact. There's some people that you will come in contact with that will make you I uneasy or will make you a, a little more at ease. And you'll say, oh, that guy was giving me good vibes, bad vibes. You've heard somebody say something like that. So God's created all of us to have, we, we operate at these different levels. Birds operate at a different level. Fish operate at a different level. I was going down the hill yesterday. There was a turkey that was crossing the street. It was almost going to be lunch. It was crossing, it was crossing from the other side to Josh's side of the road. And I thought, I, I hit the brakes and I thought, why are you hitting the brakes? That's lunch. Uh, but uh, but you, you know that that's that's where we are. And, and, and so when we recognize that these that, that there's these different levels we can adjust because the law of vibration works in harmony with the law of relativity. You're at a, where's your vibe compared to what? Compared to what, right? Can you do something about that? Can you, can you raise it, right? There's, there's times, there's times, and I'm going to suggest to you that one of those times may have been when the Holy Spirit got a hold of you and you said, you know what? It's time for me to give my life to Christ. Do you remember that feeling? Remember that feeling? I'm going to suggest to you that as you went through that, you were changing your vibration. You went up a level, right? And now you're up there. Now you don't, maybe you don't go as low as what you used to go, right? You, you, you have those different things. So um, I'm going to stop there, and maybe I did enough to whet your appetite. Maybe I did enough to scare you off and looking at some of these other laws. But um, I find these just to be fascinating, and I also find them to be very, very helpful. 
I find them to be helpful because if I can take the time and I can look at a situation, I can say, am I, do, am I approaching this from a lawful perspective? I, you know, I, I would tell you that I try, whether you realize this or not, I try to use the, the law of vibration in, in how we come and we start our class each week. You come in here all different places, right? Some of you come in here on a Sunday morning, you're, you're sky high. Some of you come in here on a Sunday morning, maybe it's, not the, maybe it's not the best Sunday morning. For those of you with kids, I know what that's like. I, I mean, you've probably heard me tell the story that if it's possible to lose your salvation, that's very, that was very, very possible for me on a Sunday morning trying to get multiple kids to church. It was just rough, right? And so what do we do? We go through this process and the idea is, is that we go from being a rock to up, up a level so that we can learn, right? That's, that, that's, that's what's being applied there. Whether or not I do that well, that's that, you know, hopefully I'm getting better at that. Uh, but that's where we are for today. Oh, and I'm going to ask you to cut that.